Welcome back. Well, with the ongoing share market turmoil and cash deposit rates remaining so low, can property investment be the answer for balancing the risks in your superannuation? The rules were made a little easier back in 2007 to make it possible to borrow to buy property through your self-managed superannuation fund. It's a strategy that's been growing in popularity, but it's not without risks. So how do you do it? How do you borrow to buy property through an SMSF? And what are the advantages and disadvantages? To explain this complex area and make it simple for us, we're joined by Claire McKay, financial advisor from Quantum Financial. Claire, thank you so much for coming in. It's a pleasure. Yes. Thank you. So just firstly explain for us, you know, how things were made easier back in 2007 to allow you to do this? So they, they've changed the law to make it more, um, more simple and there is a precise structure in which you can do it. Having said that, it's not straightforward. You do need to get advice because it is a complex area. Oh, absolutely. Just yeah. the buying the property part or the self-managed fund? <laughs> Both. Yeah. Both, because what you're doing is you're buying a big asset, a property, and that, mm. you know, as you guys know, there's a lot of, a lot of issues you've got to consider there. Then you're looking at putting your retirement savings to purchase mm. that property, and there is then the overlay of all the legal structure that you need to use. Mm. So like I said, you want to get advice in this area. Have you noticed it is becoming a more popular strategy? Because you hear a lot of people sort of say, oh, you can borrow to buy through your super, or you know, you, you hear sort of spruikers also offering this sort of... Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you remember, we had the thing called the GFC, so <laughs> a lot of people's superannuation went down. Yes. And with their superannuation going down, they're thinking, well, maybe I could invest it better than the professionals. Mm. And so that was a, another encouragement as well. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I mean, looking obviously at some of the advantages, though, first, before we get yes. into the risks, I mean, there are definite tax benefits, aren't there, to, to well, doing this? Well, if you're on, your, if you're on the top margin, if, OK. Step one. Step one. <laughs> What's the property you're buying? You can only use to buy um, commercial property, business property or um, residential property that no one you actually know or care about will ever use. Exactly. You can't use it to buy a holiday house or a vineyard or, or you know, yeah, yeah. or half your home. Your you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. So it's, um, the advantage there is you're buying it for, purely for an investment. Yep, and you're using your retirement savings, which you cannot take out until you retire, to buy that investment that will hopefully help support you in retirement. So that you put everything you've got in the world on the line on on yes. a market which is which fluctuates, and that's the stress. So if you've got um, you can purchase a property using your super. If you're then also getting debt to purchase your property, so you've used all your super savings and you're getting debt, that's a lot of eggs mm. in all, one basket. Absolutely. I guess just on the tax benefit though, I mean looking yeah. at the advantages of this strategy, is that, so how does that So benefit? you can put money into super yeah. under the current rules mm -hmm. where you, you know, you're, there are restrictions on how much you can, um, which, you know, reduce, you know, it's part of, you get a tax deduction for that or it reduces your taxable income mm -hmm. really. And the income that comes into the, in, on the property is taxed in the super as well. Mm -hmm. And so it can, it, it's all wrapped up there. And if you sell it as well then? If you sell it then it's taxed at the, the superannuation rate which may be less than your personal rate. Mm -hmm. So you can speculate to an extent, you could continue to buy and sell property. You can, you can buy, you don't have to hang on to it once you've bought this great property. You sell it, you make a profit, you move on, you buy the next one. In Absolutely. an ideal world. In, in an ideal world. Yeah. Um, and also, but the structure has to be set up each time. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So you need an accountant by your, by your hip. Really. Absolutely. I mean, I think the, the key concern is that you're using your retirement savings and you might make a profit and you might keep making a profit yeah. or you might not. Yes. But looking, I guess, at the costs then, so what, I mean, what sort of, we, what are we looking at? You've got to set up the SMS. You can't you use it, yeah. You can't use it in your normal superannuation fund. No. You can't use it in an industry or your employer fund. You have to set up a self-managed super fund. So there are costs associated with that. Mm. There's the cost of ongoing and maintaining that each year. And then there's the overlay of the cost of the legal structure if Gosh. you need lending to purchase that fund. If your superannuation is such that you cannot purchase the property and outright. That, that limited recourse borrowing arrangement. Exactly, there. yes. Is it possible to put a dollar figure on how much then it costs you extra to do this? I would say that you're probably looking at a minimum of sort of five to ten grand right. per year. Yeah. And, yeah. and also, I mean, for the lenders as well, do they view you as more, view this sort of strategy as more of a Absolutely. There's always been possible? a differential between what they will give, uh, the interest rate they'll give you as an individual and then what they would give to a self-managed super fund. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the amount that they will let you borrow compared to the value of the property is generally lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, um, a lot of the institutions are putting a limit on 70% of the value. Right, okay. 
What about, sorry, yeah. what about um, uh, grouping together with other friends, with you know, married couples have got their superannuation, sisters and brothers, can you, can you combine a few superannuations together? So the most you can put into one super fund is four people. Okay. And generally most, most superannuation funds have a couple in them or a single person. Very few have four people in them. And again, this is a, you know, it's an investment strategy, so you want to make sure you know it's easy to get in mm. with a bit of complexity, but mm. what's the plan of getting out? So if your friends, what happens when their life changes mm. that you, hadn't, you know, yeah. hadn't planned about? They suddenly want to move to Paris and yeah. take their money with them and you're stuck with a house in yeah, Bella in Vista. <laughs> In, in terms of how much do you actually need in your super then um, to be able to borrow to buy? Well, some so you know so it comes down to how much of the deposit you need and all the yeah. ongoing costs associated with that. So you know we have seen in the past people encouraging people to set up super funds with mm. very small balances to then borrow the full amount using all the super to purchase the property. I would err against that. Um, I'm again that eggs one basket. <laughs> bit, bit nervous. What if you miss? Because the thing is, you need the investment to create income, and you need a job to keep putting your super yes. in. If either of those go, the numbers may not make yeah. sense. Is there a limit though, a minimum that you would say is, okay, let's look at this? Um, well again, it comes down to um, is this just one asset or is it part of a bigger portfolio? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some institutions are now, who, lenders are now saying that the total funds must be at least 200,000 in your super. So they, they, they themselves are putting on a, on, on a cap, um, but there is at the moment no legal limit. Mm. And looking to, I guess, then at, um, you know, you were saying before the kinds of properties you can buy, is this sort of more suited to, say, uh, the commercial property, you know, someone who's a, a dentist, say, and they want to buy the, the dentist surgery in, in their super? I mean, is that the sort this of thing This has been typically who's used it. Okay. So um, business owners who have a, um, an office or a warehouse, and they've used it, and they can use it, um, the rules allow them to, to use it in their business, not mm -hmm. personal enjoyment, but business. Um, and they've bought their offices or their practice premises in, in, the, in their super fund. Hmm. It's still just, from an, being an ordinary sort of person, that just scares me to death, oh. the, the potential legal dramas and having the police on my doorstep. <laughs> I, just, I, I mean, know. Are, they, are they, you know, very strict, obviously, on, on how you Absolutely, sure absolutely. There's, and there's been... Their own. <laughs> exactly. That's the key one, is if you're deriving any enjoyment from the fund, from the property, or your niece, or your niece's boyfriend, or someone that's related to you, then that could actually cause you to lose all the tax benefits that you mentioned earlier. Mm. And the other thing is that it's, this is a big asset, and if your super is not diversified into other assets as well, there's another risk mm. there. Mm. The other one is that to get the borrowing in the first place, oftentimes the banks want a personal guarantee as well as security on the property. So there's a, you know, they're, they're pretty they're pretty strict about who they're lending to as well. So just wrap it up for us then. What are the sort of keys? Uh, I guess if you're looking at this sort of strategy, borrowing to buy property through your suit, but what are the key things that you, you need to think of? The key thing is the underlying investment doesn't make sense, and then the structuring is the additional complexity and cost worth it in your overall family's financial plan. And the pitfalls? The pitfalls are if you don't get experts involved early, you might have make mistakes, you might have double stamp duty, additional costs, you just don't want to go there. Mm. If you're going to consider this, partner with experts. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it comes back to the basics really, like mm. you said, the underlying investment, yes. it's all about getting that right to, to begin with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is just an additional complexity that yeah. the underlying investment has to make sense. Yeah. Claire, thank you so much. It's so complex, but you've made it very simple. Thank you so much for it's that. A pleasure. Claire thank McKay you. there from Quantum Financial, um, just taking us through that how to borrow property through your super. Coming up after this short break, we are going to be heading to Brighton in Melbourne, beautiful Brighton, ahead of our next live auction for you.